right into this tonight. Uh, we are looking at what does the Bible say about seeking the Lord? Isn't that word seeking or seek is kind of a strange word, isn't it? Not something that we use every day. And I was thinking about that word. I guess the first time I heard that word, we were probably playing, playing hide and seek. And uh, we all did that. I don't know how old that game is, but we certainly did it as kids. But when it comes to the Lord, I guarantee you one thing, the Lord's not hiding. He, he can be found. And we need to seek Him. So that word seek really means to look for or search out and just like we would a person, if we're looking for a person in that game, we have to look hard to find them. They're hiding. And the Lord is not hiding, but we do sometimes have to dig in to the Word and seek Him to find answers that we need to know. And I think a lot of people kind of step back and say, well, I know there's a God up there, and I'm just waiting on Him to show me everything. And it, it doesn't work like that many times uh, because the Lord wants us to have a seeking ability about us that we are looking into His Word and we're searching it and we're seeking Him for answers. So uh, tonight's lesson is about that. It's amazing what some people do to seek guidance from God. Uh, you know, people will... Well, I go out and watch the stars, and if I see a falling star, then that's, that tells me something. Or maybe it's just a chance meeting between some people at one time. Or even the strangest thing is people that get these fortune cookies, and they can't wait to get those things cracked open, and I got to read that message because in that thing is that fortune that's going to help me in life. And... uh you know, I think a good fortune that I wish some of them would find in that cookie when they open it up is stop trying to find your fortune in a cookie, get a job. <laughs> but uh, another thing that people do is, well, you know, I, I believe in the Bible. And so what I do is I just flip the Bible open and close my eyes and point to it. And whatever I'm pointing at, I know that's what the Lord wants me to do. Well, what if you're pointing at Judas hung himself and his gut spilled out? You know, is that what is that what the Lord wants you to do? No. Someone else said, I opened the Bible and put my finger on it and opened it up and it said chapter 11, bankruptcy. No, that isn't what the Lord wants you to do either. So folks, there, are, there aren't good ways and there are good ways to find God's guidance. And that's what we want to look at tonight. What does the Bible say? when it comes to seeking the Lord. Isaiah 55, 6 is our opening verse for the study tonight. And it's a very familiar verse. I know that you've read many times, but notice it says, Seek ye the Lord while He may be found and call upon Him while He is near. So that tells me we are living at a certain time that the Lord can be found right now. The Lord is near right now, but I believe there's coming a day when we're going to be with the Lord. Amen. And there will be people that are left behind that are certainly seeking Him then. Certainly trying to find Him then. So that verse is a very good uh, verse to start off the study. Man is an inquisitive creature. He's always seeking, seeking. Many times we're not even aware how much we seek out things how we're searching. But let me tell you, we're born in this world and we come with an emptiness that needs filling on the inside. And that emptiness that needs filling can only be filled by God. We can fill it with a lot of other things, but it will not satisfy. So the, the emptiness that we need to try to long for to fill is when we search for God. And, and I... I think about many times that relationship that Adam and Eve had with, with God. He said that God came down and they walked in the cool of the evening. They walked together in the garden. You see, we don't have that same type of relationship where we looked forward to walking with God personally every day. But we do need to have a relationship with God that we talk to Him and we pray to Him and we listen to Him and we seek Him. 
So there is a difference here. So if, if we don't go in the right direction, we'll seek things all our whole life, just like a lot of other people are doing out in this world tonight. I, I, you know, I just riding down the road coming to church and I pulled up to a stoplight and I looked over at these people sitting in the car and these sitting over here and I'm thinking, you know, I wonder what's on their mind. I wonder where they're going tonight. I wonder what they're doing and thinking about tonight. I wonder if they're going to church. They didn't appear to be going to church. But I'm thinking the farthest thing from their mind is probably God. I don't know. Maybe not. But the thing is, a lot of people are searching for something and they're trying to fill it with all the wrong things. So tonight the Word of God has a lot to say about seeking. Seek is used 237 times in the Word of God. So that tells me it's pretty important. Pretty important. Many of those instances that we see that word are in reference to seeking out God. So what does the Bible say? There is a struggle to find what is missing in our lives, especially as a non-Christian. So number one tonight, we want to look at some of the things that are the problem here as far as when it comes to seeking. Man seeks his own way and what he thinks is right. That's, That's the number one problem, is that we begin to seek our own way and say, hey, you know, I've just come to this conclusion. This must be the right thing. This must be the right way. This this is what I need in my life. But if it doesn't line up with God's Word, if it doesn't line up with the Holy Spirit's leading in our life, then it's probably going the wrong direction. Now notice Numbers chapter 15 in verse number 38 through 40. It says, Speak unto the children of Israel and bid them that they make fringes in the borders of their garments throughout their generations, and that they put upon the fringe of the borders a ribbon of blue. Now that sounds strange for them to ask them to do such a simple thing. Make that ribbon of blue around that garment, something that definitely would catch their eye. And why does he want them to do that? It shall be unto you for a fringe that you may look upon it and remember all the commandments of the Lord, and do them, and that you seek not after your own heart and your own eyes, but after which you use to go a-whoring, that you may remember and do all the commandments and be holy unto your God. Isn't Isn't that strange that just a simple thing, like a blue ribbon around a garment, so that when they see that, They say, oh, you know what? God did some great things for us. God provided for us. God looked out for us. Just that simple thing. And I kind of apply that to the Word of God today and even things that happen in our own lives when we can look back and say, man, I remember what God did for me back then. I remember what He did and what He's continuing to do. And that says I'm going to seek Him Instead of seeking other things. When I need answers, I'm going to seek the Lord. So it's it's amazing how man wants to seek his own way. And that was the warning in those scriptures that you, you not seek after your own heart in your own eyes, but that you seek the Lord. Number two is man seeks where his flesh leads him. Boy, don't we have a problem with his flesh many times. Sure we do. We look to things that feel good, look to things that we see and think, and all these things are going on in our minds. But Proverbs 14, 12, and this is another familiar verse that we have in here, Proverbs 14, 12, there is a way which seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. Isn't it amazing how we can be going our own way in life and think, well, you know, I I think this is the right way. I, I think this is what I need to do. I think this is the way I should go. And it's amazing that people even try to bring the Lord in that and say, well, you know, the Lord told me to do that. Are you sure he told you to do that? Are you sure that that's the way that he wants you to go? You know, I think, uh, 
And many times we throw that wording around, well, I've got a peace about that. <laughs> and many times it's not the kind of peace that we really need about that situation. But we do need to find out that there is a way that's right, but there is a way that's wrong. And find the right way. Number three, another problem is we seek fulfillment in doing what everyone else does. What everyone else does. You know, when we were kids, you know, we always had that saying. And, and I remember growing up and telling my parents, well, you know, I want to do this. And my, my mother's number one word was no. And, and it didn't get no better. The next word was go ask your father. And guess what? He knew that word too. Yeah, no. And I, I remember telling her one time, I said, you say no to everything. And she goes, well, I know it's not good for you. I know it's not right for you. But then I'd come back with, well, you know, everyone else is doing it, you know. And I thought, well, that, that, would, that would certainly get it. And she said, well, no, I don't care if everyone else is doing it. And, of course, give you that illustration. Everyone else jumping off a cliff, you're going to jump off of there too, you know. So uh, that, that wording that everyone else is doing, what, what is the problem today? What's filling up our seeking of the Lord many times? You think about it, as we grow older now, now we face things like those crazy TV talk shows that was on TV. I mean, sit down and listen to some of those sometimes and find out what a waste of time many times it is. And the thing is, a lot of people are listening so that they can, yeah, that's what I need, that's what I need to do. That, that's the way I need to go. And even today we have, of course, all the... Uh, Facebook things on, on and everything else that we can read and get advice on what to do and how to do it and so forth and so on. So we got all these things filling our minds up about what we should do with our life and how much of it did we step back and say, well, wait a minute, I need to ask the Lord what He wants me to do. I need to check with the Lord and seek Him over this particular thing that's going on. So uh, here in Leviticus 19.31, Regard them not, or regard not them that have familiar spirits, neither seek after wizards to defile, be defiled by them. I am the Lord your God. So people are reaching out to all kind of things, even man-made religions, occults, things that we have in this world today. Second Timothy 3, 5 says, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof from such turn away. Turn away from those things. So we can get caught up seeking those things instead of seeking the Lord. Many of them are false, many unbiblical, many man-made things out here today that don't please God. And yet we get, get caught up in those things. Number four, they seek to fill the void by being busy. I like this point. Being busy. And yet sometimes we don't think about this. But that way, if we can stay busy doing something, then we don't have time to hear what the Holy Spirit has to say. You know, we get up of a morning and we're thinking, all these things are rolling. Well, I got to get this done. I got to go there. I got to do that. I got to do all of these things and they're on my list, my calendar, and I've got a itinerary and I got to get these things done. But how much of it did we put God in there and say, but I've got to talk to the Lord today too? I've got to seek Him to over what's going on in my life too. So if we don't watch out, the devil, the world will fill our day so full that we've done everything but seek the Lord in any situation in our life. Romans 12, 11, not slothful in business, but notice fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. And even Jesus said at this, when the disciples, he was talking to him in Luke 2, 40, 49, he said unto them, how is it that you sought me? Wish ye not that I must be about my father's business. So we can be busy, but we might not be busy for the Lord. We may not be busy seeking the Lord and looking to the Lord for answers. So watch out how busy we stay and how much we push God out of the picture. Now, I kind of change a little bit there on your outline, and this is why we should be seeking. Those are the problems that we're doing and that's happening in our life. 
But why should we be seeking God? Number five, because we know we can find Him if we look. It's not like we're seeking in vain. It's not. I mean, when you open up your Bible and read these verses in here, do you th- do you close it and say, "Well, that's nice, but that, that that doesn't mean anything"? Of course not. As a Christian, we believe what's in this book. We stand by this book. We read it and believe it. And so we should we should come to a point in our life where we know, hey, if I seek the Lord, He's up there. He's gonna. I'm gonna find Him. Deuteronomy four twenty nine. But if from thence ye shall seek the Lord thy God, thou shalt find him, if thou seek him with all thy heart and with all thy soul. And those particular verses, those wordings will come up again. And I found it interesting that that means we're not to seek God half-heartedly. Or just not when we think just need him. But I think with our whole heart, And with our whole soul means that we get up of a day and we're thinking, I can't go through this day without without the Lord. So I'm going to seek His his advice and His counsel. 1 Chronicles 28.9 And thou, Solomon, my son, know thou the God of thy father and serve him with a perfect heart, with a willing mind. For the Lord searcheth all hearts and he understandeth all imaginations of the thoughts. Boy, that's scary, isn't it? If thou seek him, he will be found of thee. But if thou forsake him, he will cast thee off forever. And then Jeremiah 29, 12, Then shall thou call upon me, and ye shall go and pray unto me, and I will hearken unto you. And verse 13, And ye shall seek me and find me. And here it is again, When you search for me with all your heart. So it is very important to put our whole heart into seeking the Lord. Not half-heartedly. Number six, because we know we will be happier if we find God and can be close to Him. Why should we seek Him? Because it will make a happier life for you and me when we find Him and find out what He wants us to do. You know, when you're in God's will, it ain't nothing like it, is it? It's a peace there in your life. But boy, when you're doing everything under the sun and it's just not what God wants you to do, and you realize that, then you you say, hey, I need to go back again and seek the Lord. 1 Chronicles 16.10, Glory in ye in His holy name, that the heart of them rejoice that seek the Lord. In Psalm 105, 3 and 4, Glory ye in His holy name, let the heart of them that rejoice seek the Lord. Seek the Lord and His strength, and seek His face forevermore. I like that part, seek the Lord and His strength. Because we need His strength in our life, don't we? We we don't know what we're going to face tomorrow. But we need the strength of the Lord. And it's good to seek that and want to know that. Number seven, another reason we should do it, because we know God will keep us from doing the wrong thing. Wow, what a great point from do who, you know, we we can always look back and say, man, I wish I hadn't done that. I wish I hadn't said that. I wish I hadn't thought that. I wish I hadn't even gone there. Well, maybe if we would have seeked the Lord before we got started and all that, then he would have helped us prevent many things that could happen in our life. Second Chronicles 12, 14. And he, and this is talking about King Rehoboam, did evil because he prepared not his heart to seek the Lord. Isn't that interesting? He didn't, he didn't prepare himself. That's like getting up of a day saying, you know what, I'm going to get prepared today. You get prepared by dressing for work. You get your car prepared by putting gas in it. You get everything, compared, you get it ready for things in life. But when it comes to the Lord, do we stop and say, I'm going to prepare my heart today. And I'm going to seek the Lord. Second Chronicles 7.14, you know this one, great verse. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and do what? Seek my face. Turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land. That's America's verse right there, amen. 
That's what it needs to be every day. Number eight, we need to seek him because his way is the right way. His way is the right way. We talked about that, just touched on a little bit earlier, how we have our way, and then we have his way. Now, his way is maybe not the way we had picked. His way is maybe not how we had it planned. His way maybe is taking the, the long way around or is taking a different way or that we just, we just didn't figure that in our life. But if we go his way, it'll be the right way. Isaiah 45, 19 I have not spoken in secret in a dark place of the earth. I said not unto the seed of Jacob, seek ye me in vain. I, the Lord, speak righteousness, and I declare things that are right. You know, I'm glad that when I read his word, I don't have to worry about reading something that's wrong for me. I know it's going to be right. Every word in here is going to be the right word. And when the Lord, you seek him, Trust in Him. He'll give you the right way to go. Number nine, because He will meet our needs. We have a lot of needs, physical, spiritual, psychological, all kind of needs in our life. And what better way to approach these needs when things happen is to stop and say, I'm going to seek the Lord and find out what, I can, what kind of help I can have in this situation. We can always step back and say, I don't know what to do now and just throw up our hands and give up. Or we can fall on our knees and say, Lord, I don't know what to do. I need your help. And I'm seeking that help tonight, today. So we find in Psalm 34, 10, the young lions do lack and suffer hunger, but they that seek the Lord shall not want any good thing. And you know that familiar verse in Matthew 7, 7. Ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. Three different things in that verse that you need to do. The Right in the middle is seek. Seek. And we do need to do all of those things. When we got needs in our life, say, Lord, I'm asking you. I'm seeking you. I'm knocking on heaven's door and I'm not going to stop till I get an answer from you. And if we'll be uh, continue to do that, I believe the Lord will answer. The Lord will open. The Lord will give us what we need. Number 10, God promises can be, He can be found. Because God's promises, He can be found. He will intervene in our life. You ever been just going through life and realize that you need God's intervention in your life. You just need it. Because you've, you've got, you've come up on something in life that was unexpected. You, something has happened that you had no idea what happened. And it happened so fast and quick. What am I going to do? I need God to intervene in my life. Second Chronicles 15 and verse number one, and the Spirit of God came upon Azariah, the son of Obed, and he went out to meet Asa and said unto him, Hear ye me, Asa, and all Judah and Benjamin, the Lord is with you while ye be with him. If you seek him, he will be found of you. But if you forsake him, he will forsake you. And I like the, the, the uh, history that it gives in verse 3. Now, for a long season, Israel had been without the true God and without a teaching priest and without the law. But look at this. But when they, but they in their trouble did turn unto the Lord, God of Israel, and sought him, he was found of them. See, there could be a period of time when we feel like the Lord's far away. There can be a period of time when we feel like we, we haven't gotten an answer. We, we, we don't know what's going on. Maybe you've been asking for a while, seeking for a while, knocking for a while. Think, oh, am I going to get an answer? And I believe it says if you will continue to do that, continue to seek Him, then He will be found. He will be there. Don't give up on God. Amen? He won't give up on us. I thank the Lord for that. 
Number 11, because our way does not work. What a better way, what a better point. Why should we seek the Lord? Because our way just doesn't work. It doesn't work. Psalm 119, 155, salvation is far from the wicked, for they seek not his statutes. But I'm thankful for the day that I came to that point that I realized I was lost. I was seeking, and I didn't know what to find, but I found Jesus, amen. And when I found him, what a difference. And I said, hey, you know what? My way is not going to ever work, but his way will. I'll trust him. And then number 12, why should we seek him? Because we will be blessed. We will be blessed. Psalm 119.2, blessed are they that keep his testimonies and that seek him once again. How? With a whole heart. With a whole heart. You know, most people, I think most people in the world today are seeking God. Maybe they don't know how to seek Him, but they're seeking God. I don't see how they can't look around them and realize there is a God. And realize He can help them. But there are many, many, many that have given up on God. And they're doing what they feel is right. And the sad part about it is they'll be doing that when Jesus comes. But some have found God. And some have a great relationship with God. And we know we're going to heaven one day and have that peace that will always be in our hearts. But I think this, Christians, I think we have an obligation to try to help others seek God. We have to say, hey, you know what? There is an answer. There is someone that can change your life. And share that gospel message with others. They need to know, you know, and I, and I can't stress how important our Christian life is an example. You know, they're searching. They're going to see you. They're going to see your life. They're going to see how you handle problems and how, who do you go to? Who do you depend upon? And when you begin telling them what Christ has done for you and how you wouldn't be able to make it through without the Lord, these things, they'll weigh on their mind. And hopefully they'll say, hey, I need to know the same God you know. And you'll be able to help them. You think about it this way. If we don't share Christ with them, who will? Who will? Seek ye the Lord. Remember how we started off? Seek ye the Lord while He may be found. Seek Him while He is near. You know, I don't know how much longer we got on this earth. But I guarantee you, God's going to wrap it up one day. I don't see how it could be long. I really don't. But seeking is an important thing, isn't it? I hope as a Christian we seek the Lord for answers every day. I hope we seek Him in our hearts and with our whole heart. But seeking is a very important word when you think about it, and that's what the Bible has to say about seeking the Lord. Amen? Amen. Amen.